I'm Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brit Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the UJK Technology Router Table, which I've recently bought from Axminster Power Tools here in the UK. The parts that arrived are as follows. I've gone for the cast iron table, which is under here. Also in the kit, when you buy the router table, uh, you get the, the leg and frame that the whole uh, thing sits on, and that's in this box. We'll see that in a minute. And in this box is the professional fence. I've also purchased the UJK uh, Technology Router Elevator. I've uh, got one or two other extras. I've also got the dust extraction box. And I thought I'd better show you, this is my old DeWalt DW625 router which I've had for years. <laughs> I actually bought it from Axminster Power Tools a long time ago, and I'm going to use this in the writer table. Now, I've unpacked everything from the uh, writer table stand uh, box, uh, and it's laid out here. I always like to lay things out so I can identify them, make sure they're all there, and also uh, overcome any ambiguities with things that might look similar. And we've got here the upright supports, and there are four of those, one at each corner. I'll probably call those legs accidentally a number of times. There are upper side panels, both short and long. There are lower side panels, short and long. There are cutter holders here, and also a wheel support bracket. Uh, now, the router table has two fixed wheels at one end, and they're in this packet with their uh, brackets. Uh, it has a mobility wheel at the other end, which uh, you can put down so you're then able to move the writer table around, because particularly with the cast iron top, it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, there are uh, four feet, which are in this packet. Uh, there's the uh, mitre fence here. Uh, it's not yet joined together, but I'm holding it like that to show you that there's also a mitre fence support which will fix onto one of the legs, and when this isn't in use, uh, you would rest it there like so. I always like to check the fixings, and in this case, all of them are here. There's 40 of those M6 bolts. There's 40 washers that go with those bolts, and there's a couple of uh, small screws and some nuts that go with them. Uh, my first panic, of course, was where are all the uh, nuts that go with these screws? And then I realized, of course, that uh, these uh, legs... <laughs> I've done it, haven't I? Uh, these legs have... Uh, screw threaded uh, holes in them already. Now, as that is the case, uh, one should not really and truly over tighten these because uh, it's only the thickness of the steel and uh, so uh, don't get your very best socket set out to tighten these up. You tighten them up uh, to they're just nicely nipped. Now the instructions that I'm using, um, now I downloaded these from the Axminster website. If you go to the product uh, page for this on their website. Uh, there's a download section and you can download uh, this uh, set of detail. It tells you all about it, how to assemble it, and so on. Uh, I think it's quite a good idea so that you can get hold of these instructions in advance of the kit arriving. And actually you can learn a huge amount about something you're about to buy by doing just that. I do it quite often. Now all four of these legs are identical and they are distinguished by having at the bottom a threaded insert, which is where the adjustable feet go, and then the outside of the legs have the threaded holes in. So I've got a pair of legs, and their outsides are there and there, and this is an outside on the top because the threaded holes are upwards, and the very top of the legs are near me here. In step one, I'm to take one of these uh, top pieces and it says use the long ones and so I'm going to use the long one and we're going to locate it between a pair of legs using the screw inserts at the top. Now the flange here points inwards, so in other words downwards from where I'm looking, uh, in towards the centre of the uh, frame, so uh, uh, downwards in this context. And then you're going to take four screws and four washers and we're going to put a washer on each screw. And for now, I'm just doing these finger tight. And we're now going to take one of the long lower support brackets. And the lower ones are wider uh, than the top ones. There are two sets of holes, uh, a, an upper set and a lower set. Uh, the lower set is not going to be used for this. We're going to use the upper set. 
and we want this to go on so that the flange is at the bottom, in other words, towards you, the camera end, in other words, towards the bottom of the feet. And we're going to locate it like so. And again, uh, we're going to put in four of our little bolts and four washers. So all of these are finger tight, but being a woodworker, uh, before I tighten them up any further, I'm just going to check uh, that things are nice and square. I'm just going to give that a little nip, and we're really not going to tighten these too tight at all. If you remember, I said there's a danger you can strip the threads. And now check, check this side. Yep, pretty good, and tighten up. And again, I'm just nipping them up. I'll do a final tighten right at the very end. That's one done, I'll just do the other. The next thing to do is to put the uh, short support brackets on and to, to make life easier for me, I'm keeping it upright. I don't like bending down to my back. And so I've got uh, one of my little uh, click clamps from Bessie holding this one in position and one over here holding this one in position. So they're reasonably secure. I'm now gonna do a similar process to what I did before. And again, I'm just checking for square. That's perfect. And then just tightening these up hand tight. We'll do the final tighten up at the very end. So that's it. So that's stages one to four complete. Right, I've now turned it upright. It's on a level surface. And so I'm now going to go around and do the final tighten on all of these bolts. And I'm using my rather super duper wearer wrap adapter thing, which uh, I have reviewed, look through my videos, you'll find it. And I've got that same socket in there in this dinky little, but very, very good little baby uh, socket spanner thing. So here we go. I'm not going to over tighten. Remember, if you over tighten, you're going to strip the threads. So you just got to feel it till it starts to really nip and then stop there. Next, we have to find the wheel support bracket. That's this one and we're going to uh, mount it here with these flanges sticking uh, outwards, in other words, towards the camera. And uh, give these a, just a little nip up. Not too tight. Don't want to strip the threads. So that's on. Right, we're on step eight of the instructions now, and uh, for this we need to install the adjustable feet. We're next on step nine and we have to take the mobility wheel assembly and remove these five hex bolts which are here, the bolts and washers. Now we have to line this up so that uh, the holes in this plate uh, match up with the holes in the support bracket and of course we've got this plate. Now it's interesting that this plate when you position it over those holes there's a hole in the bottom of the plate there which lines up precisely with a hole in the cross piece which is below it. Remember, this caster wheel is going to be up for most. Now the tolerances are quite tight on this and when I first offered up the uh, wheel assembly it was just a little bit tight and it's about the thickness of the paint that's on this uh, uh, cross bracket here. So what I did was I put a clamp on like this and just gave it a very little just a tweak like that and then that allowed this assembly to fit on over the bracket and that works really well that's it and finally I'm going to put this uh, screw in here just to do the final bit of securing that's nice and tight now I followed steps 10, 11 and 12 and that is putting these two brackets on for the uh, wheels at the front, putting the wheels in place and then adjusting the height of the feet. But I then discovered that the rear caster wheel, even when it was in the up position, was still touching the ground and it meant that my rear feet uh, were not actually in firm contact with the ground. So this is my plan to overcome that. And this is what I suggest uh, you might do. Follow the instructions and fit the rear caster wheel, as I've done here. But then, when you fit these brackets at the front, uh, 
leave the lower um, bolt on both sides loose. Then don't go to the trouble of fixing these wheels in uh, properly, bothering with any washers or anything like that. Just put the bolt through a wheel on both sides. And this is only a temporary measure just to get an initial bit of adjustment right. So there we have these front wheels in place. Now what we have to ensure is that when the rear caster wheel is up, that these feet are definitely touching the floor. And you can check that by having the wheel in the up position. And if you move uh, your whole framework to and fro, you can see that the wheel's not turning. And if you want to make sure that those two feet uh, are uh, adjusted correctly relative to each other, use the spirit level, put it on your bench, in my case, dead level, and then put it across here, and then adjust these so that is dead level as well, and ensure that that's free to move. So I've got those correct there. I'm now going to tighten these up so that those will not move. Now, it's important at this stage that uh, these front feet are in the correct position. At the moment, uh, these wheels are doing nothing because they're, they're loose. So we need to adjust those. And again, I'm going to use my spirit level. I'm going to see how the bench is for level. Oh, amazingly, it seems to be spot on. And then I'm going to put this across here. And I've actually adjusted that, so that is correct. And then I check across here uh, for the final one, and that is correct. So I've now got all four of the little feet correctly adjusted. And again, I'll tighten that up and tighten that up. So all four feet are correct. Now I turn my attention to the wheels. The wheels have just got to be level with these feet. Well, the easiest way to level them is to make them just touch the ground at this point and only just touch the ground. Because we can't get at the bottom hex screw, we're just going to tighten the top one like that. So that's tight. We now remove the two bolts and now tighten the other hex screw. And remember, don't over tighten it. I've now put both sets of wheels on, uh, remembering that it's uh, a washer on either side of the wheel on the inside of the bracket, uh, washer and then the nut. And I've got the bolts going through that way and adjust it so that that wheel turns nicely. And now to test it with the rear caster wheel in the up position, I make sure, first of all, yes, it is firmly sitting on the feet. Then I lower the caster, uh, which means it's on the caster wheel here, and just check that, yes, indeed, it is running on those front wheels and the feet are clear of the ground. So that's it. And the final stage is to put on these tool holders with the remaining uh, six millimeter bolts with washers, and uh, just remember uh, not to over tighten. Well, I contacted Axpunst of Power Tools uh, to tell them about my view of how the levelling feet and the wheels should be done. And they were really nice about it. And they've looked at it very carefully and they agree with me that uh, my method is right. And uh, I told them I was making this video and they asked me to show my method in the video uh, and to explain that they will change their instructions. But, you know, I, I really have enjoyed dealing with them. They're a real good bunch of people down there. Well, that's the support frame finished, apart from the mitre fence support assembly. I've not put it on yet because I'm not sure where I actually want it to go. And it can go on at any time later. In part two, we're going to complete the assembly, including the router elevator, putting my writer into it, and then getting everything ready for its test run. Mm -hmm.